Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. As we go around the world and all, and particularly in the United States, uh, we find that the law enforcement, whenever they talk about people using cannabis or making a cannabis rest or when they find something all, they always refer to it as drugs and narcotics. And we've talked about how this doesn't follow the protocol set aside by the United Nations Office of Drug Control Policy, which can, determines drug control policy for the world. And we're a member of that through our association through the Singles Narcotics Treaty. And we're supposed to follow the protocol. And they only list cannabis now as cannabis herb or cannabis resin. But the law enforcement in the United States still continually refers to it as narcotics or drugs or people who smoke cannabis as drug addicts and stuff like that. And this is just totally wrong. I don't know what it's going to take to get them to eventually follow protocol like they're supposed to, but I think a lot of it has to do with this uh, ongoing batch of lies that they keep telling so they can keep their job. Of course, the Drug Enforcement Agency is always going to make cannabis look as bad as humanly possible because that's their job. It's job security. If we can make the public think that this is something that's really bad, then guess what? The public will think that we need a drug enforcement agency and we need to be going after these people that smoke cannabis and all. But the problem with all of this is even more deep than following protocol and, and calling cannabis cannabis or calling it pot or a drug or an herb or, or whatever. The, the biggest problem about all of this is the mindset that people through the decades have been brainwashed to believe. And you take modern day, one of the biggest problems out there today, it has nothing to do with cannabis, but the biggest drug problem out there is these prescription drugs and, and things like Oxycontin and Vicodin and hydrocodones and those types of things. The people who take those when they get a prescription from their doctor and they take those and all, they don't consider themselves as a drug addict. They don't consider themselves as you know, some criminal or anything like that. Yet, they have no problem about looking at somebody who does heroin, which is just another form of the opiates, just like the Oxycontin and all. Uh, they, it's an injectable form of it and all. They call them criminals and drug addicts. And I really wonder if these people that take those, particularly those that abuse them, and, and very few of the people who get prescriptions for those drugs ever follow the recommended dose that they're supposed to take per day. Most of them are taking, you know, some some of them in some cases are taking as many in one day as they're supposed to do all month. But uh, I wonder if any of those people ever discern between the fact that they, you know, by taking those substances and all and and all, they're pretty much considered a drug addict also. And why why don't they look at it like that? And and why do they look at the cannabis user who's just using an herb? that has never killed anybody or has no really bad side effects or anything, why do they call them drug addicts? And it's all this is, comes about from these decades and decades and decades upon decades of lies by the government and the Drug Enforcement Agency to make their case that they need to be in existence. And that's why cannabis is on controlled substance. It's on the Controlled Substance Act in Schedule One, the the most harshest, severest schedule of all, is because they want the public to be to perceive this as a dangerous drug. It's why they came out with medical marijuana. They want to narcotize this herb to make it seem like that you do need to go to a doctor to get a prescription for it. It's that that all falls in the same lines. And all of this all this boils down to is mindset and how people perceive people out there that do drugs. I mean, when you see a person going to, to the liquor store and buy a six pack and they come out and all, you don't call them an alcoholic. They may be an alcoholic. You don't know that. It might be the first time they ever bought beer and, and they're going to drink it. But but people don't look at them going into the package store and coming out with a you know a six pack under their arm. They don't call them drug addicts. They don't call them alcoholics. And even when they see people at bars that get drunk or people on the streets that are drunk or driving cars and all they don't call them alcoholics they just say they're drunk and all and i i just wonder where where in your brain do you make the discerning you know where do you discern between the two to where you know i'm i'm this but you're that or he he's doing this so he must be that 
and and this is wrong. We just we it's this mindset that we have seemed to have developed over the years, and it's because of the war on drugs and the and the government's uh, hand in there trying to make everything as look as bad as possible. So the public is in this constant, you know, they're they've heard so many different things about cannabis. I'm sure they are confused. As what what is the truth and all? But one fact that stands above them all, and it's one we've repeated many, many times on this program, and we probably will continue to keep repeating it, and that is that cannabis overdose has never occurred. We've already determined that the, the lethal dose that you have to take for cannabis is 1,560 pounds in one puff, and we know that a hardcore smoker, if they smoke from the time they were born to the time, if they died at 100 years of age and they smoked 24 seven, they wouldn't be able to smoke 1500 pounds in their lifetime. So we know that, that it's impossible for people to overdose on cannabis. We know that it's impossible for people to die from using cannabis. It's just the human brain with the limited number of receptor sites that allows the binding of the THC absolutely prevents overdose prevents the, the substance from becoming addictive, and also prevents death. We can't say that about alcohol, can't say that about cigarettes, can't say that about most of the prescription drugs or the side effects from prescription drugs. And I, you know, the, we're, everybody out there is so caught up in the stupidity of trying to say, hey, you're a drug addict, or you're a pothead, or you're an alcoholic, or you're a boozer, or you're, you know, that they, they're so stuck on all that, but they don't give any time to really trying to figure out, you know, what, what is the truth about these things and all. And you can't argue with statistics. The, the fact that nobody's ever died from using cannabis and all should be a statistic enough to remove it from any kind of control, particularly when you have alcohol and cigarettes legal that kill over 700,000 people a year. And I wonder if the people out there that are taking prescription drugs, even if they go to their doctor and they get a prescription and all, do they really feel like that they're not a drug addict, that they don't have a problem because the doctor gave them their blessing, the doctor gave them the prescription? And maybe that was the idea behind. I, I really wonder, though, when you out in California and the places where they have medical marijuana legal and all, when the person goes to the, see the doctor to get their initial prescription for cannabis and all, uh, and after they get the cannabis and they smoke it and all, does the public then perceive them as, oh, okay, they're not a pothead, they're not a cannabis user because the doctor gave them the prescription. And I, I'm very confused by all that because <clears throat> I can think that if you were in a room and you had somebody that lit up a joint and the person that lit the joint up didn't have a prescription from a doctor and he handed it to a person that did have a prescription from a doctor and somebody walked in the room and saw them smoking a joint and they didn't, they were one of these that for some reason just fall apart when they hear about somebody using cannabis, which I don't even understand that kind of logic, but they would walk in the room and say that they were both potheads or they were both drug addicts or they were smoking narcotics or something like that. Yet they'll turn around, pop out their little pill bottle that has the RX from their doctor and they pop a hydrocodone or a Vicodin or an Oxycontin or two or three or Xanax or one of those and they go on about their merry way thinking, oh, I'm not a, I'm not a drug addict. I don't use drugs. These are, this is something the doctor gave me. I, this is okay. I don't, you know, and I, at least I'm not a pothead or I don't use you know, dangerous, illicit drugs or, or illegal drugs or, or, you know, and you, you can see the source of the confusion for people out there. It's just, but, but this is done on purpose. This is done by the people who control everything, namely the Drug Enforcement Agency and the United States government. And it's a way of ensuring that they are going to have a job. Because I guarantee you, if we made cannabis legal, the 65% of all of the Drug Enforcement Agency's activity and Homeland Security on the border, it has to do with trying to eradicate or catch people smuggling cannabis or catch them with possession of cannabis. 65% of that. So if we, if we made cannabis legal, turned it over to free society, which is what it should be done, so we can get the hemp industry going and all, but if we did that, then basically between 60 and 70% of these agents would be without a job. We wouldn't need that kind of enforcement to, to go after cocaine and, and some of the other illicit drugs, even though they don't kill like the prescription drugs do. I think that if the Drug Enforcement Agency really uh, you know, wanted to maintain job security and all, they should only do prescription drug cases. 
because most of the people who get prescription drugs, they abuse these prescriptions. They don't take them in the, in the manner they're supposed to. It's why they overdose. The body can't handle that kind of toxicity, and it ultimately leads to death. The 27,000 people that die of Oxycontin overdose every year, which, by the way, is about 10 times more than what die from heroin overdose. And, and if you combine all the illicit drugs, crack, cocaine, cocaine, methamphetamine, heroin, all of those, the illicit drugs, they only kill about probably about 20% of what just that one substance kills. So, you know, there is no foundation out there to have these harsh laws against the illicit drugs and discerning that the people who use heroin or the people who use crack cocaine or use cocaine or methamphetamine just because they're illegal, that they're drug addicts. And then we turn around and a person taking Vicodin or Oxycontin or anything like that, whether they've gotten it from a prescription from a doctor or not, these people aren't considered drug addicts in, in their eyes or in the doctor's eyes or generally in the public's eye. And I really think that, that uh, we as a society are dumb if we go, you know, if we allow this to continue, first of all, but if we really think like that. I mean, where, where's your disconnect at? How come you can't see that the, the person who's taken Oxycontin, you know, it's an it's a, it's a opium, it's a synthetic opium, just like heroin is, a, you know, is made from uh, the opium from the poppy plant and all. And y'all call the heroin addicts drug addicts. You call them criminals because it's illegal. Why aren't uh, the people that are getting prescriptions from doctors and dying? We see celebrities dying from these. We had one death the other day of a, a Whitney Houston, the singer, you know, that, uh, that they may have attributed to drug overdose. Uh, why, why, why are we society like this? Why do we make this distinction? And why are we so hard on the cannabis people because their, their substance of choice, which is an herb, has never killed anyone. Never. Now, since the dawn of time, there's not been one death recorded from cannabis use. So it's a mindset out there that's mainly done by brainwash, by the DEA, by the government and all, and people buy that hook, line, and sinker. And I, I, what is so strange to me is these people that... that uh, say that are severe alcoholics and all that don't that have never smoked cannabis or or done anything else say they are just as severe alcohol. when you talk to them about people who are smoking cannabis and all they just they just talk about the cannabis users this oh this waste of a human being this you know god god forsaken i mean we just need to just throw them out into the pit they've done stoop to the lowest of all and they think nothing about the fact that they're an alcoholic that they're that the alcohol drug that they're drinking and all causes severe health problems causes death to at least 150,000 people a year 40 something thousand just from alcohol poisoning and not to mention the drunk driving accidents and all of that and liver disease, of course, and, and because alcohol is one of those that's very debilitating on the organs of the body. And yet we've never had anything like that happen with the cannabis plant, the cannabis shoes, the cannabis flower tops. They're an herb, they're a natural plant, they're, they're a gift from God, if you will. And I just wish people out there that are so hard on the cannabis people, and I would take a look at this and all, because we, we have laws in place that are trying to eradicate cannabis and arrest all the people who use cannabis when they are really using the safest substance out there. Whether it's legal or illegal has nothing to do with it. It is actually a safe, safe herb to use. And that is why a lot of these people that use this don't become alcoholics. They don't use prescription drugs and all. And not only are they worried about the deaths from prescription drugs and alcohol and cigarette use, but the side effects also kill. We don't have that with the cannabis. So there needs to be a complete revamping of, of all this mindset and the thinking of people. We just, we've got to change that. We've gone through this, uh, this decades of brainwash lies and all. It's time for people to really start looking at the cannabis corner, if you will, and if you want to learn the truth about these substances. We produce the facts. We don't put anything out there that's not fact, factual based, scientific evidence. And we need to change the mindset of the people out there because they've obviously bit the other hook, line, and sinker, and we, we just got to change this because it's wrong. It's, we're, it's wrong as a society. We didn't learn nothing from the prohibition when we tried to keep people from drinking alcohol. I'm a firm believer that it is your constitutional, individual right to put in your body what you so see fit. You are the one in charge of that, 
not the government, not your neighbor, not the people at church, not the people down the street. It is you. You're the one that decides that. And nobody has the right to tell you otherwise, to judge you for that, or to make up laws that say you can't do that and arrest you if you do get caught doing that. This is just so wrong in our society, and it's so simple. I mean, if, if, if people would remember that old saying, you know, the sheep in wolves' clothes, I mean, you don't, honest to God, you need to take a real close look at these problems and really see where the problems exist. And they exist with the prescription drugs. They've never existed with the cannabis and the cannabis herb. And the fact that we're keeping this plant illegal because of all the lies and all the propaganda is just wrong. And it keeps the hemp industry from happening, which would end all of our unemployment and bring a trillion and a half dollar industry back in place here in this country, which would put a lot of the people that are unemployed back to work and really stimulate our economy and maybe give our country a chance to get out of debt. So people out there that smoke cannabis, continue the fight. We, we need all your help. You people who don't, please get smart. Please educate yourself. Please don't look at yourself as any different because you drink booze or pop pills or anything like that as the other people who decide to put a different substance in their body. They have every right to put their substance in their body just like I have a right to put cannabis in my body, just like you have a right to drink a beer, drink whiskey, pop a pill, do whatever you want. As long as you're not harming somebody else, you have every right to do that. And I don't believe too many of the people out there will be able to tell you that anyone who smokes cannabis, cannabis is going out there and doing violent crime for harming other people. And I thank you for joining the Cannabis